If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. All right, up next we have Andrew Manus. Uh, his, his organization of uh, Reopen and, and uh, Reopen New Hampshire uh, has been really exciting this past year uh, because we had some huge problems that we've never had to have before. We've never had our state shut down by the government in quite the same way. And uh, I think it's, it's really awesome how he started an organization to really push back against that because it, it's on us as the liberty lovers to be champions for freedom and set the standard and just bring along the rest of the population in our quest here. So give, give a round of applause for Andrew here. He's gonna tell you about what he's up to and uh, what his plans are for the future. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm a lifetime supporter of the NHLA, so right. definitely Woo. definitely support the organization, they're great. Right now, um, jumping to the end of what I wanted to talk about, um, you know, we are focused very much on legislation right now, but we're not focusing on all liberty legislation. We're focused on legislation that is devoted to reopening the state, rebuilding the state from this, um, I don't even know what to call it, COVID-19 fiasco um, that we're involved in. Um, and, uh, I guess ending the state of emergency is our top priority. Um, it's been our top priority since April when we started. Um, but what I wanna do is kind of go back uh, because that's what we're doing now. And if you wanna help us, we absolutely need you to contact the state house, uh, the legislators, uh, the, 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 the members of the house, the members of the Senate, and tell them that you want them to end the state of emergency because when they hear from a lot of people it does change their minds. Uh, the, the representatives who are here can, do, can attest to that. So um, they really do change their minds when a lot of people contact them. So that if there's anything that you could do at all to help, it would be that. Contact your reps, contact the reps on the committees, tell them it's time to end the state of emergency. I wanna tell you the history because I, I'm hoping that it inspires some of you to do something similar in your own way, because each one of us contributes to the Free State Project in our own way, and uh, we're all here to make our, you know, impact in New Hampshire and make it a better state for our, our future, our children. So hopefully, in the story, you'll you'll get a sense of maybe I could do that, and you know, didn't think about that before. So what happened was March 13th, you know, Governor Sununu declared a state of emergency. Uh, we kind of saw it coming for since February. The writing was on the wall. We, we knew it was going to be coming. It was just two weeks to flatten the curve. And frankly, um, on that day, when those words were spoken, I was fine with that. I thought it was a good idea. Um, I'm just being honest. And Dennis Goddard, who we all know and love, <laughs> And, and, and he, uh, he and I were, were talking on Facebook together about how dangerous COVID-19 was and how, how we all should be afraid of it. And I, I was frightened by it, I'll be honest. I'm a, I'm a Christian, so the fear did not last very long. Um, and then, you know, two weeks in to the state of emergency, it's a 21 day state of emergency is how it works in New Hampshire. It's like, all right, well, it's gonna be over in, um, next week because, you know, <laughs> the curve's clearly not going up and it's pretty flat, so it's gonna be over, it'll be fine. And I, you know, I was, I was back to normal, living my life like I normally did by that point. Um, and uh, clearly that didn't happen. And it was, it was beyond concerning, to say the least. So, um, it was around that time that Carolyn McKinney and I, her and I ran uh, the Republican Liberty Caucus of New Hampshire back during the last major wave uh, of representatives and libertarians getting elected into the state house. That was in 2010. I was one of them. Um, and, uh, you know, we got 73 libertarians elected that year as Republicans. And, uh, that was a, a great effort, and, and we kind of, after, after that whole you know, two-year period, we, we, we went away for a while, and it, was, it took a lot out of us. And uh, 
we got back together for this. We talked on, on, on the phone and said, we've got to do something about this. Nobody's doing anything about this. So we spent that night, we put a petition online to end the state of emergency, and then we promoted it. Uh, we used a lot of our own dollars to do that, a lot of our own time, sweat equity, put it up. Uh, and then we, we promoted it and promoted it and promoted it some more. We had 1,000 names, 2,000 names, 3,000 names. We just kept going. It capped out at 85, around 8,500 names, a little less than that, but it's about 8,500. 8, and, um, you know, all of those people were added to our email list. Um, so we now communicate with those petition signers in an effort to try to end the state of emergency. Um, and, and the reason I'm telling you these mechanics is because this is what you could do um, for your effort that's libertarian in nature uh, to make the state a better place. Get a petition going, get some names, get some people who agree with you, and build a group to, to accomplish that purpose. And frankly, we're not done yet, clearly. So, uh, but we're, we're working on it, and I want to run through some of the other things we did, hopefully, again, to spark some ideas in you. Um, Holly Bean Seal and Dan Hines, uh, around that time, had a lawsuit they brought to the uh, court, was not successful, but that is what kicked it up a notch for us. That's where we were like, we, we really need to do something, and we organized some protests at the State House, teamed up with uh, Health Freedom of New Hampshire, some great folks there, and uh, had, I think, 600 people came to our second protest at the State House. So it was a, a, a wonderful event. Um, and uh, that protest at the State House are not going to change anybody's mind. Let me be clear about that. It's really a feel good effort for the people who are coming together to protest. And, it's, it, and, and to get, get together and meet and talk to each other and network. That's really the, the purpose of a rally. Um, and we did that. And we built a coalition, and we started working uh, towards the effort that we have now. We then, um, I'm gonna back up a little bit because I wanna tell you the reason why I, I did this outside of, I mean, I'm a financial advisor. I meet with people remotely. I meet with them in person, their preference. That was before the pandemic I did that. And nothing has changed in my business whatsoever. Um, I, I've actually donated a lot to the Free State Project through my business We, because uh, I help people help people save money on taxes and, and that kind of aligns with the Free State Project a bit. Um, in the, you know, long-term taxes, I help people avoid uh, tax burdens in the long run. So that's, that's my business. But, so I'm not affected by the pandemic at all. My business is, actually was up last year um, quite a bit. So why would I do this? Why would I devote 30 hours a week, uh, 40 in some cases, to something where I'm making no money at all? <laughs> it's because of my clients. Um, in large part, a lot of them were suffering, and I started to see it. They, they were calling me, and I was hearing their stories, and I, I was empathizing with them. That was one thing. The other thing, okay, this one's a little bit more personal. My church closed. And uh, that really bothered me. <laughs> so I wanted to do something about that. And, and just to kind of jump ahead to that story really quick, we had a worship event at the State House. Because there were a lot of other people who felt that way too. Um, why is my church closed? We need to worship. We need to, it's our First Amendment right to do that. So we had a worship event at the State House that went exceptionally well. And in line with that, I, I sent it to my pastor afterwards because we taped it on YouTube. And um, <clears throat> he didn't like the kind of messaging I was sending him. And, and so he wanted to have a meeting with me. I think it was to kick me out of the church is what he had in mind. <laughs> Um, but I sat down with him and I said, you know, Pastor, uh, the Bible says that we are to go to another person when we believe there's a problem with, with that person and not make a big you know, scene about it. We go directly to the other person and talk to them directly. He's like, wait, 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 you, you think I'm sinning? And, and I said, I absolutely do. <laughs> the, the Bible requires us to, uh, God has asked us to assemble together for worship. And uh, you're not doing that. We're not assembling together on Zoom. Um, 
so we need to get together. And, and he, uh, he called a fast for the whole church, and not long after that, opened up the church. So that was, that was a big win. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, is that I, I called him up afterwards and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to come back. I'm going to start one at my house now. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I did when the church is closed. They started one at my house and it, it, it's, it's growing. So you're all welcome to come. Uh, <laughs> um, but... Uh, <clears throat> Or was I going on that? Anyway, <laughs> so um, you know, I think the uh, there we are. <clears throat> that's that's where I was going with that. The next thing that we did was we opened the beaches. Um, I know Governor Sununu would never give us credit for that, but uh, you know, we were doing the state house thing i think we had three or four rallies at the state house and he, he he made some comment about oh well yeah we love the protesters they have the right to be there so we're, we're not going to arrest them of course they had signs up all over the state house grounds you know we can't uh you can't protest here you can't gather here i think some of our people ripped them down so that was nice <laughs> carla and i had a nice photo on you know next to some some armed folks who were keeping us safe which was nice um and uh, but uh, we, we, we organized the protest at the beaches. We called it the Storm the Beaches Rally. And uh, it, at that time, the beaches were closed, and they were arresting people for going on the beaches uh, all over the country, not just New Hampshire. Um, so the day before our rally, uh, the governor opened the beaches. <laughs> so I don't know. Not sure if it was us, but we'll we'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> All right. So the other thing we did, we wrote a. Um, I, I was a journalist by trade, uh, financial services journalist actually. So why why write about it when I could do it? But um, you know, so I uh, have a lot of PR uh, writing experience, and I've written op eds. I've written a lot of press releases. I think that's important for movement, even though the press is not on our side. To get our position out there to speak the truth as a drumbeat, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. Just keep saying it over and over again, even if you're saying the same thing. It's critical. Have to do it. We all have to do it. We should be writing letters to the editor. We should be writing op-eds constantly, all the time. Repeat the same thing over and over again. Just change the words slightly. Keep sending them in. Have to do it got to change people's hearts and minds that's how you do it um, so we also um, had a 4th of July rally at the State House because um, you know everyone else was canceling their events so we wanted to have one we, we did we read the Declaration of Independence from the State House and then we declared our own Declaration of Independence from the governor's emergency orders and we told businesses that they ought to open anyway and do what they want to do and I know the voluntarists in the room will appreciate this, but we were pretty serious uh, about the position that if you're a business owner, I don't care if you have a license or not, what are they gonna do if you go to the liquor store, buy a bunch of liquor and then open a bar and start serving people? Just do it. We can't let them control our lives. We have to, we have to create an alternative society right now that is going to be open and normal despite what the government's doing. And I highly encourage that. Um, I wish I had the money to, to do it myself, but my business is it's fine, like I said. So I guess I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> so some of you pick up the pick up that area. Um, so the website has a section. It's reopennewhampshire.com is what we started as. And we're also known as Rebuild New Hampshire because at some point in July we had the the crazy idea that the governor was actually going to open the state and end the state of emergency. <laughs> Who would have thought that we wouldn't do that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. It's ridiculous. But um, you know, so we changed our name to Rebuild New Hampshire. We elected 74 uh, people to the legislature um, who were endorsed by us. We focused on that. 
where uh, now that those people are in there, and I think some of them just didn't, you know, I, I think they were in districts where our brand was not conducive to them getting endorsed, so uh, or, or to them winning, so they didn't ask for an endorsement. But they're still our people. We know who they are. Um, so the '94 Herschel talked about, you know, those are those are the people we're working with as well. We're trying to work every angle. We have a lot of bills we're working on. Hopefully, we'll append some of them to the budget and get them passed, uh, despite the governor's veto threats. Um, but we've got to end the state of emergency. That's that's priority number one. We're breaking some news. I mean, I, it's out there, so it's not really earth shattering. But for our supporters, it's going to be it, it's a big thing for anyone who doesn't know about the cycles. Um, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll. I'll just fill you all in. You don't have to wait for the email on Monday. If you want to get on our email list, sign our petition and put you on the email list. It said reopennewhampshire.com. It's right at the bottom of the page. Just sign the petition. You'll get on our email list. But um, basically, we had a um, a symposium in November for state reps and senators. We invited them to come. All the facts about COVID-19, the lockdowns, the masks. We discredited basically everything the governor's been using to promote his state of emergency, uh, using facts and science, real doctors. You know, these aren't, you know, fluke doctors. They're, they're the real thing. Some of them have a lot of credentials, and they came and they taught the legislators about the truth. Well, one of those doctors, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try. It'll be in the email. Um, he explained that when they do the PCR testing for positive COVID uh, results, which basically the state has been using to promote this whole state of emergency. Oh, we have all these new cases. We have to keep the state closed. We have to keep the emergency orders going. Um, well, the test they're using, the PCR test, basically takes a sample of you know your, your body fluids and it has maybe a little little virus in there. They have to double it multiple times to actually be able to detect the virus. Well, this doctor told us that if you double it more than 30 times, you're going to get a positive test on anything. It doesn't matter what you're testing for. It'll be positive if, if you cycle it more than 30 times. So guess how many times the state's cycling for PCR tests? 40. 40. <laughs> and we, did, we have them admitting that on paper, and that's coming out on Monday. So. Um, so clearly, all of the positive PCR tests and all the new cases we've been hearing about in the news, it's, it's ridiculous. It's false. I mean, some of them might be cases, but how do we know? We don't know. Uh, 20, if it's 20 cycles and you're getting a positive, yeah, that's a positive test. But 40, no, absolutely not. It's all fake. So very, very important news, and that needs to be used by all your reps in the room to end this thing. Um, <clears throat> we have Melissa Blasek. We got her elected in, out of Merrimack. She's our executive director. Um, I, I have her basically doing our day-to-day -day inside the legislature. So if you have any questions about bills or how, what's going on with, with that, talk to her. Uh, it's director at, reopen, at, director at rebuildnewhampshire.com. Um, and then we also launched a different organization called the Liberty Defense Fund in New Hampshire. Thomas McLeod is in charge of that. And he, they're running basically legal uh, challenges. We worked with uh, an attorney named Robert Foho. He has the one case that's still going on right now, Mary Rivard. It's going to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Uh, seems to be going well. So pray for, for that success there. That would be awesome. Um, and then, um, you know, we, we did Lily Tang Williams. I don't know if any of you guys know her. She, she's from China. Um, doesn't like communism, you know. <laughs> but um, anyway, we, we had a symposium with her on Thursday. It's, it's available for your review if you haven't seen it. Really good about propaganda and how propaganda of China relates with the propaganda surrounding COVID. So you could check that out. So what we're going to be doing from this point forward is working on getting our bills passed, working on stopping bad bills, but they're focused bills. They're all about the COVID and the, and the, the pandemic, quote unquote. Um, and uh, we, we're trying to get things back to normal. It's going to be a long road. 
uh, I'll be honest. It's, it's not going to be overnight. So we need all of you. We need all of you to take action on this. We, all, we need you writing your reps. We need you writing out letters to the editor. We need you basically talking to your neighbors and trying to convince them to take off the mask. That simply does not work. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. The science proves it. Um, so, and don't wear it when you go out. I don't, I haven't worn it once. I have not worn a mask once. Don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to let the next guy speak because I think I've taken a lot of your time, but I thank you very much. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. <laughs>